Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to quickly give a shout out to this video sponsor, Swagbucks. If you're looking for a little quick cash, you can actually earn money and gift cards by filling out opinion surveys, watching videos about products, testing games, or even just surfing the web. After checking it out for myself, you earn a little bit here and there, but it adds up fast and it's literally that straightforward. They're also offering a $5 bonus just for signing up. So if it sounds like a good deal, check out the link in the description below to get started. Hey everyone, Kaijin Goomba here, hope everyone had a great E3, I know I did, and yes, before you ask, I have plenty to talk about with all those announced games. But in the meantime though, there's something I've been dying to talk about for months now. So with the announcement of Monster Hunter Generations coming out for the Switch this summer, and the recent release of the Elder Dragon Lunastra, I figured now would be a pretty good time to dig back into the Monster Hunter franchise and find some cultural inspirations behind these massive beasts. And you'd think that'd be pretty easy, right? I mean, in most cases, most video game monsters and creatures usually have some sort of inspiration behind them, right? Well, you'd actually be pretty surprised when it comes to Monster Hunter. I've put in at least 60 hours in every game since 3, and I gotta say, the majority of these monsters are insanely unique. Well, to be fair, in some cases, these monsters are actually just hybrids of real-world creatures, like the Zamtrios, who's basically one part shark, one part frogfish. Or all parts frogfish, like the Gobel. True, but by and large, the majority of monsters that Capcom's come up with have very few direct connections to creatures of folklore, and instead are either 100% original or are only lightly borrowing from the Animal Kingdom. Ever since my video breaking down the Kirin back in September of 2016, I've pretty much given up trying to find cultural inspiration in Monster Hunter's big baddies. Until World. Now granted, there are still a ton of completely original or at least half-borrowed designs in Monster Hunter World. I mean, you got snake panthers, chameleon raptors, or sometimes just straight up raptors. Bird up! Hello. And let's not forget the horrible hybridization of a dragon and a B-52 bomber. But then you've got a small handful of monsters whose roots reach something deeper. Monsters like the Otogaren. Yeah, you thought Clifford the Big Murderous Dog over there was simply a product of a designer's mad fever dream to torment players? It's actually much worse. The Otogaren is actually a broad take on a cryptid belief to dwell in the Chubu region of Japan, the Kamaitachi. Literally meaning sickle weasel, the Kamaitachi themselves are bizarre hybrids of a skinny weasel whose arms and legs are tipped with razor sharp sides capable of slicing through armor and flesh alike in a blink of an eye. They revel in tormenting travelers by leaving long scars on their victims' bodies as they move as fast as the wind. In fact, in some cases, it's believed that the attacks of the Kamitachi involve three creatures. One to knock down the traveler, another to apply the cut, and another to apply a salve that heals the wound into a scar. Which already is starting to sound more and more like the Garen with how fast this annoying scab pile moves. Now, let me pull back for a second, because I know there are more than a few of you asking how in the world the Garen could be a weasel. Popular opinion agrees that it's a canine, right? Well, let's quickly compare the two. While both canines and mustelids have long bodies, tails, and claws, canines have muscular differentiation between its front and hind quarters, relatively short tails compared to its body, and claws that actually lack the ability to grasp well. Weasels, on the other hand, have long uniform bodies, are capable of having much longer tails, and are completely capable of grasping its prey with its claws, just like the Otogaren. Also, unlike dogs who growl and bark, weasels chatter, very similar to the call of the Otogaren. Alright, so it's a weasel, but how is it a Kamitachi? Well, what's the most defining characteristic about the Odo besides its obnoxious speed? Well, the obvious connection here are the sickle claws. While all depictions have Kamitachi with only one set and the Odo Garen has an entire row of them, it's still easy enough to see the similarities. But the biggest thing that stands out between the Odo Garen and the Kamitachi besides its obnoxious speed is its obnoxious bleed effect. Exactly. When struck by the Otogaren, the player begins to literally bleed out as their health drains unless they stay completely still and crouch for a few minutes, or they eat a piece of Astra Jerky. Wait, how does Beef Jerky stop bleeding? Do you just slap it on like a band-aid, or does ingesting a strip of Jackling suddenly coagulate your blood? Mmm. Hey, I'm not Naki, I love this stuff. Dude, I have no idea, but the Kameitachi does the exact same thing. According to a citation from the Sozan Cholmon Kishu from the Edo period, the Kameitachi attack is so fast that the body can't even register pain or even bleed for a few minutes. But after those few minutes, the cut would burn like fire and bleeding was almost unstaunchable. Mmm, throw away. Ugh, how did people survive to tell the tale? Was there some kind of Japan jerky that could stop the bleeding? No, something that makes even less sense. Old calendars. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Apparently, if you torch an old calendar and rub the ashes onto your wound, it stops the bleeding immediately. 
But wait, in Shinetsu, it's also believed that stepping on a calendar can summon the Kametachi. So how is burning it okay, but stepping on it is a no-no? Dude, you're asking me to make sense of a supersonic weasel with sickles for paws. Well, I can tell you one thing. A calendar ain't gonna stop Odo once it gets its claws in you in the Rotten Vale. You know, that's another similarity I found between the Odo Garen and the Kamitachi. In the Kochi and Tokushima prefectures, as well as other parts of Western Japan, it's believed that these little scythe weasels actually dwell high in the mountain ranges above those prefectures, like the Sanuki Mountains, whose highest peak is 1,056 meters. In comparison, most of the time you're going to encounter the Odogaren in the dank subterranean monster graveyard of the Rotten Vale. But the Odogaren also makes its home high in the Coral Highlands, literally the highest map in the entire game. So while the connection might seem kinda up in the air, ha, <laughs> I see what you did there. Ugh. There's still plenty of evidence to show that the Odogaren took a great deal of its design, abilities, and even habitat from the Kameitachi. And you know, come to think of it, there's actually one last piece of evidence that links the Kameitachi and the Odogaren together. What's that? Weapons, think about it. In every Monster Hunter game, armor and especially weapons take on the natural properties of the monster it was built from. Baroth weapons are blunt and stout just like the monster, Rathalos weapons are sharp and fiery just like the monster, and what of the Odo Garen's weapons? While many are simply fashioned to just be ridged and pointy, one particular weapon made from the Odo Garen, Sin, is literally nothing but four scythes chained together as a dual sword type weapon. Even the weapon made for your Palico is a scythe weapon, specifically a Kusarigama combination sickle and weighted chain weapon used by Ninja. And you know, that Palico costume looks awfully shinobi-ish. Honestly, I think it looks a little bit more like a Shisa. But in any case, it just goes to show how subtle yet numerous the connections can be between Monster Hunter's gigantic beasts and some of the most esoteric folklore creatures in the world. Maybe there's something more to this franchise that I can dig into besides a scabby blade weasel and a hyperactive unicorn. Heck, there might even be something to be said about the coup of Taroth and the Lunastra, but that's for another video. As for now though, thanks for watching everyone. Before you head out though, be sure to swing by Swagbucks by clicking the link in the description to earn some quick cash through surveys and surfing the web. In the meantime though, I'm gonna dive into Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and see what I can find. And I'm gonna admit, this is gonna be the first time I've ever researched about Japan's history with prosthesis in conjunction with Buddhism, Ninja, and Lord knows what else I can piece together from this trailer, but it should be fun. But until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.